one of the things to think about in leadership is a lot of times you see managers and leaders try to control people's behaviors in times when it really doesn't matter. Business is messy and unpredictable. Sometimes lonely. So lonely. So lonely. <laughs> and inspiration can often come from really weird places. We pick up where the bullet point blogs and the highlight reels leave off. We start with the stories. Welcome back to So Here's My Story. I'm Jody. I'm Elliot. And it has officially now kicked off our birthday month. Yes, it has. I, I'd be shocked if anyone did not know by now that we share a birthday on September 1st. No, I'm, I'm sure we've made that abundantly clear. <laughs> so you can, you can now start, uh, everyone listening, you can now start now thinking about what you'll get us for our birthday next year. Because yes. you'll have plenty of notice. But, it's never um, too early. So... On the day before our birthday, you and I got together for um, our traditional annual cocktails and oysters um, at a local place here. Yep. And we really put some finishing touches on our birthday contest slash month because because I think it's fair to say what we both want for our birthday is is more people listening to the podcast and and more people in more importantly more people in the Facebook group engagement so, yes the yes. whole thing yes um so I wanted to take a minute just to talk about that and and um say a little bit about how that contest works because we're super excited about it so um but before I do speaking of the Facebook group we have a new member yes Michael Smith it just popped in there this morning so welcome. we requested it a couple of days ago so welcome Michael um please take a moment to introduce yourself we look forward to chatting with you I believe Leave Michael is in Missouri, or is it Missouri? As I think that I think the natives say Missouri. Do they? Okay. Yes. So sorry if I botched that, but um, welcome, Michael. The rest Good of to the, have the you. other forty nine say Missouri. <laughs> All right. So here's how the contest is going to work. The easiest way to get there is if you go to S H M S B Day. So for birthday, but just B D A Y. So S H M S B D A Y dot com, and that will take you directly to the Facebook post where the instructions are. So um, if oh, I should tell you why you even want to do this. Yo, so <laughs> why do you want to do this? Jody? Someone's like, could you? I really don't care about this. What we're going to do is, so we're going to have this month-long contest. You can have as many entries as you want by doing the things I'm going to list here in a minute as many times as you want. And then we will have a drawing, live drawing, um, Facebook Live on October 1st. And the winner will um, either, your choice, get to record an episode with us, um, which we can do live um, I mean, we will all do together to have a, a three-person episode of So Here's My Story. And we might even let you tell the story, if you have a good one, that is, and if you're a good storyteller. Or I guess if if you want to enter the contest and you, you don't like that, you can hurt our feelings and take a gift card instead. But you will also get two of our uh, whiskey glasses. So, And we may actually have some prizes for second and third place people as well. So that's why it's worth, worth joining in. You can go to the Facebook post, you share it, and then there's instructions on how you can earn additional entries. So you get one entry for recommending the show to a friend. We'll throw in a second bonus entry if you actually help that friend get the podcast up on their phone if they don't know how, because a lot of people don't understand how to listen to podcasts. So if we can move that along, that would be really cool. And all we will need is a notarized affidavit. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> to demonstrate that you've no. taken both of these No, steps. this whole thing is on the honor system, folks. So um, so you can get an entry for those two things. Um, you can get an entry for subscribing. Um, and we put some links to make that easier. One entry for recommending the show on uh, social media platforms that you participate on. Two entries for joining the Facebook group. And another entry for introducing yourself once you do. Entry for liking the So Here's My Story page. All of those things, you just comment on that original Facebook post that you did it and we will however many entries you have we'll put your name in the fishbowl that many times for the and you can actually check all of those boxes in in five minutes you can do all of these things oh, yeah. easily it, it's yeah, it yeah, yeah. sounds oh, and, it's and longer to, be clear, to describe than it no, actually totally, totally. To and you I, there are so many options because i didn't want to insist that people do exactly one thing you can just choose to tell a friend you can just choose to like us on facebook you don't have to do all the things um that's just if you want to increase your entries so I hope you will share profusely and participate. And the cool thing is that we're going to come out of this with hearing another voice on the podcast. I can't. No, I am so excited to have another really person cool. yeah. on with us. So, yeah. And if you're already a member of our Facebook group, I'll be posting there about some. You're, you're going to be getting points for already being there and whatnot. So that's that. That's that. Do Now, do you have a story? Because I'm actually storyless today, believe it or not. <laughs> you are storyless. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been storyless, but I... I, have I no do have a story. Okay. I do have a story. It's a little bit embarrassing, but I'll tell it anyway. Oh, wait, wait, wait. 
Let's thank our sponsors. Oh, right. Okay. Um, so, as always, we'd like to thank Tom Loveland at Mind Over Machines, Cat's Copy, the architecture firm of GWWO, and Mary Craft Staffing and HR Solutions. Now, I will launch into my embarrassing story, which, as many embarrassing stories do, they start with the bathroom. So, here's my story takes place at work and uh, so I was in my office and I decided that I'd go to the bathroom so I I go into the bathroom and right behind me so I had to hold the door open for him is this is this guy that comes in and he has a small emotional support dog um, like a shih tzu or one of those Mm -hmm. smaller dogs so this wasn't a big Labrador type thing anyway So in the dog's name, as we will learn... I can't wait to find out why that's relevant, but go ahead. (laughs) The dog's name, as we will learn, is Max, a detail that is also relevant. So I um, walk into the stall and I get myself situated and all of a sudden, you know, and I hear the other stall door close and all of a sudden I see this little dog nose his way under the stall door. Oh, so you have a friend in the stall. I have a friend. Okay. First, he hi, comes Max. in, he looks at me, and then he comes all the way in. And I was like, hi, animal. <laughs> and so I hear from the other stall, this guy going, ah, Max, Max. But he's calling him like we're in a library, which, uh, to be fair, I understand because as the guys in our audience would know, you don't talk in a men's room. So, um, <laughs> so but he's just going, Max, Max. And Max cocks his head in the direction of his master's voice, looks at me, and lies down. Oh, no. So, (laughs) Max and I are apparently enjoying this journey together. (laughs) So, I finish up and I get out at roughly the same time the other guy does. And Max, of course, precedes me out of the stall. He trots out very happy. And so, I'm washing my hands. and, And as is the other guy, we both leave at the same time. As we walk out of the restroom, the guy doesn't even make eye contact with me at all. Mm -hmm. And I head right to go to my office. The guy heads left to go to his office, presumably. And Max, after a moment of indecision, heads right. So now Max is following me down the hall. Yes, he's following me down the hall. And I turned a corner and I noticed him. And then I hear this guy, same voice, Max, Max, Max. (laughs) And I stopped because I didn't want Max to follow me into my office because right. then it would be a thing, yeah, right? Yeah. So so I stopped and the guy comes trudging along around the corner, clearly put out in a huff, does not make eye contact with me again because I'm like, hey, I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> but doesn't make eye contact with me. He scoops Max up and he stalks away. Hmm. So I will tell you that now this qualifies for the first part of our requirements. It is a story. Right. But I told this... For this distinct purpose of saying to you, go ahead, find a business lesson. Oh, oh, okay. So hold on. So you think that I can't make a business lesson out of that? No, I don't think you can. Have you met me? I don't think you can't. (laughs) I'm just challenging you to do so. Oh, I kind of wish you'd told me that in advance. I would have had even more fun um, sitting there because I, so spoiler, (laughs) I have a business or at least the beginnings of one. Okay. Okay. So. (laughs) Wow. I I love that you thought you could stump me. Hey, you know, it's just one of those things that I like to do every once in a while. And (laughs) I challenge anybody else to do so either. Well, this would be a really boring, uh, super boring episode if I'm like, I got nothing. Yeah, I got nothing. Okay. Well, no, because (laughs) I I, I, I have a second bathroom story, but I'm not going to tell that. Oh, okay. So, okay. So here's what what I came up with in that. So I think there is actually a leadership sort of management and leadership lesson or thread in that because- this is going to be good. (laughs) Please proceed. (laughs) This metaphor could go really sideways really fast. Yes, it could. No, but there's something about um, there was some. Oh, Oh, I know. Boo hiss. Um, There's something about it reminds me a tiny bit of the X. Well, not really like that X Y. uh, X X leadership and Y leadership. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen that distinction? Um, Not. It doesn't quite line up with that. But so I'll come back to that part in a minute. But there is something about that dog kind of migrating over to you and just hanging out there, even though this guy's like, Max, 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 hey, you. And it, it, as you were saying it, I was just thinking about like, 
like, like micromanaging and and like constant mm, berating okay. and like and and the sort of pushing people versus being like a more compelling leader where you're where you're making space for people. I mean, there is something about the natural gravitation of that dog where he was just like, hey, it's not that guy. <laughs> well, I will I will tell you that it's it's kind of funny because and I was just talking to uh, Nikki about this uh, yesterday that dogs can tell when you're a dog person. Mm-hmm. It seems and and not that employees are dogs. I'm not stretching it that way, but but people can tell when you're a people person, I believe, and when you're interested in them. Well, no, but see, I think that's the difference. When you're interested, there's something that's. Um, I keep making these. Now I wish we had video because I, I I feel like I could describe this in movement, <laughs> not like not like interpretive dance. I was but just going like, to ask: are there, are, are there puppets involved? <laughs> No puppets, but it's more of like a, a distinction of postures, kind of. So there's okay. there's something passive is not the right word, but there's something about making space for people to be where they want to be, to be there of their own effort and energy, like because they're bringing their extraneous or not extraneous, um, what's the word I mean, like extracurricular energy to something, mm-hmm. versus kind of like the other version has almost sort of a um, like a little bullwhip energy to it, like. Whoosh, like I'm, I'm making you do something. I'm like, you know, when I hear leaders talk about, well, I, I came in and I, I, I ride my team hard. I, I make like when you're making people do things versus creating an environment where it, they want to do the things that you want them to do, that they're, they're naturally engaged. And because people are interested in them in there, I mean, we're, we're putting a lot of story around Max coming down to yeah. your stall here. So I'm, I'm definitely, there's a wee bit of a stretch here, but but I think there is something undeniable about, you know, people don't like to be told what to do. They like to have clear, clear outcome. They, they, you know, they like to have a clear um, destination or clear objectives. They like to have clarity around what their responsibility is. But most people don't want somebody going, Max, 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 Max. Like, well, I think that's, <laughs> I think that's true. And particularly if you look at it, in the environment where we were right at that moment in, in the restroom, there was nothing that Max had to do to fulfill his function, whatever his emotional support function is. <laughs> there was nothing that he had to do. Presumably, he would have been fine resting out by the sink. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know, unless I, the guy's phobic of toilets and I, then the dog's well, really letting him down. <laughs> yes. But I think that that one of the one of the things to think about in leadership is a lot of times you see managers and leaders try to control people's behaviors in times when it really doesn't matter. Yes. So they're not really checking the box. And I understand completely if you need to control when and how people do certain things that are vital to the job that they accepted. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to control things that are outside that don't make a difference to the organization, but just kind of satisfy whatever personal need the leader has to be recognized or to be catered to or whatever it is, then I think that you have a serious leader issue and not an employee issue. Yes, that that's actually a really interesting point. I think that that comes back to something of... I think we've even talked about this before. Like when I was in architecture, there was this, I wasn't an architect, but I worked in an architecture firm for 15 years. And I loved this concept of like, when we were doing specs, you know, the specifications that go along Mm -hmm. with the set of drawings, you can't, at least in the kinds of projects we were doing, um, you, you often can't specify, like, I want this particular window. You you have to say, like, it's a window that meets these criteria and they call Mm, it means and methods. So you can't, you can't tell, you can't say the contractor has to do things in this order or that they have to use this particular brand of window. You have to, you have to set the criteria by which the outcome is considered acceptable. And now the, you know, you, you can make that criteria small enough that you're likely to get that particular kind of window if that feels important. So you're not saying um, Anderson model DQS seven. No, you're saying it's got to have a have temperature a, rating or yes, a, and this, and it has and, to meet that. And you can say it has to be wood and it has to have this kind of glass. like, you can set all the parameters by which the window okay. is acceptable. Um, again, if these were, you know, a lot of these were, were school projects or, you know, like things like that. So it doesn't go into, but but this idea of means and methods, I think, is such an important concept in leadership because often I would be sitting with a client who, for personal quirk reasons, would would be upset about like maybe like a like employees eating at their desk, 
mm-hmm. or something. Like they hated that employees ate at their desk because they felt like it meant that blah, 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 like X, Y, Z, A, B, C. And that was usually a valid reason, um, whatever that was. So that's the outcome that you're trying to create. But you can't go around just telling people they can't eat at their desk because it feels baseless. Like, you know, it feels like you're saying like, like outside of the realm of what feels important. So, you know, saying, um, you know, and often, often I will think about like, I want this thing tracked. Do I care whether the person tracks it in Excel or on their phone or by hand or on a whiteboard beside their desk? Really think about whether now sometimes that matters right, because other people need to be able to see it. And so it can't be at their desk. Like there are sometimes valid reasons. But so often in trying to drive an outcome, I think people end up putting rules around things when something's not. Well, and I see that a lot, actually, in sales and marketing, because people um, will place on and particularly in professionals, you'll place on the lawyers or the accountants or whatever business development. And I get that you have a business development emphasis. But I also see you getting down to specifics. You have to join X number of organizations. You have to go out to three lunches a week, mm-hmm. et cetera. Well, that goes into means and methods. I, you know, exactly. I, I had a very good friend who was at a, at a company who, as they were growing, were starting to put more kind of procedures into place, which made perfect sense. But he has always been, had always been, he actually left the company um, because of this and many other things. He had always been incredibly successful at what he does and he was still incredibly successful at what he what he did. And part of his job was to generate new business and he's always been very good at that and he had his way of doing it. Well, they decided to put in all these procedures where you have to make 40 of these calls a week and you have to do, and that wasn't how he had successfully been driving business and but but they were, you know, they had some people who weren't being successful so they were putting some parameters in but huge mistake, I think, in saying like, okay, everybody has to do these things versus saying everybody has to create this outcome. I don't care if you get there by passing out lollipops on the corner (laughs) or making phone calls or however you're going skiing with people that you meet at, you know, I don't care how you do it. You just have to create this outcome. So I think that's, but I want to go to another part of the Max story. Okay. There's also something kind of repetitively, I I don't know exactly where this goes, but it feels really important to leadership. There's something about just (laughs) repeating the same word over and over and over again like max, max, max. There's something about trying to get someone's attention by just sort of smacking them with the same two by four that it just become white noise in the background. That was a super mixed So, So what you're saying is the key, if you're hammering in a nail crooked, the key really is to redouble your efforts. Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. (laughs) There's something about that. What I hear from that story is that Max has just learned over time to just ignore the sound of his name being yapped at him. And it's probably wildly frustrating at that for that guy. And yet he just continues to say the name over and over again. So I think there is something about leaders getting drowned out after a while, if they're just sort of whacking at the same thing, the same way without. Um, so maybe it's, maybe it's sort of in that theme of, you know, if you don't want the same result, don't keep doing but the that's, same That's thing. kind of interesting. So that if you look at the options available to Max's owner, mm-hmm. right, it, the first thing that he has to do is understand that his words, just saying Max, Max, Max over and over again is not having result. Now, he understands it's not having the desired results, but he's got to think about that fact and not just perceive it. And so his options would be either to figure out an incent, you know, a different word or a different command or come up with a consequence that Max immediately feels either an incentive of a treat or a consequence of a punishment of some sort. He's right. got to make it matter. Well, and 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 I would say if we were taking over to a leadership thing in addition to that, sometimes I think this this kind of thing happens when the relationship has become um, out of alignment or a little toxic even sometimes where you've, you've just gotten used to a certain person reacting a certain way. And so therefore you drown them out. I mean, where I, where I see this kind of thing happen a lot is, um, well, actually I should say like the next thing that often ends up happening is that the person who is, doesn't get the attention that they want then sort of escalates the level of drama of they're trying to draw attention to things. So almost like if you started yelling, Max, right. Max, Max. Yes. Um, and and then that then creates even more of a boy cried wolf kind of kind of thing where like, oh, I'm going to be even bigger about it to get more attention. And people just 
drown them out after a while versus trying to find a completely different way or enrolling the person in the bigger problem. I mean, that doesn't work over to a Well, no, but, but that's dog, the but. point, though, because I was I was thinking that somebody listening to this could say, well, wait a minute. You know, if this were not a dog, if this were an employee, you could have a conversation. You could just enroll them in in uh, reaching a resolution of the problem. But I think it's kind of cool that it is a dog. And the reason <laughs> that I think it's kind of cool is because a lot of times the employee or the team member, whatever, is not going to tell you. Right. It's not going to be for whatever reason, either they are taking certain actions, but they don't really perceive it. For example, they might be consistently putting your thing at the bottom of the to-do pile, mm -hmm. but not consciously. It just kind of gravitates there and there's a reason for that, but they're not going to come to you and say, hey, I'm putting all your stuff at the bottom of the to-do pile and here's why. Right. <laughs> so a lot of times if, if you kind of pretend, all right, well, if they're unable to communicate, they're voting with their feet, Right, right, they're, right. They're Max just, was voting with his Max feet. Max was voting with his feet. <laughs> so if they're voting with their feet, then then why is that? Why is he voting with the feet? And that's the important question to no, ask. No, it really is. It really is because Max does not have a way to say, Stan, I'd like to talk about the way you handle things with me. Like I'm not, he doesn't have that yeah. capacity. So he votes with his feet. Right. I think actually the way he would say it is, Stan, you know, I'm really not connecting with the way you're, you're treating me. That's, that's the dog voice. That's, the do <laughs> that's Max's voice. He says, Stan, I hate that stuff. I hate what right, you I'm going to try really hard not to now focus on why Max, Max has a lisp, but, um, or a, you know what? Or a speech impediment. I really, kind, I really think you should, you I shouldn't seen comment on that. I think, <laughs> I think that, that Max would appreciate it if you just treat him like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, yeah. So I, I love that you have actually been able to take this story to even deeper levels than, than I originally did. And I love that you thought you, you could stump me, but, um, you know, you know what? I just had an idea. What was that? Sidebar. Um, what if we should, we'll have to talk about this. Um, but I would this this could be so much fun. Those of you listening, you should record stories. You have to keep them kind of short, like like two to three minutes, and send them to us. You can email them to us or or whatever. You can send them on oh, Facebook Messenger, and we could play a story and then see if we can come up like see if there's a business lesson. Right. In it. it doesn't have to be a bit. It just has to be an interesting story. It doesn't have to be a story. business lesson. In fact, I kind. Of, I mean, I prefer it isn't. I mean, if it's a little bit easy, if it's like, well, my boss did this thing and then I did this thing. I mean, yeah. that's that's just like um, stump us. Try to stump us. Like, come, just tell the 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 the, the criteria will be. It has to be a really good story, and you have to you have to tell it well. You know, it has to be entertaining to listen to the story. And you can't um, you can't name people or companies that would not want to be named. Right, right. That would be that. Would, we would yeah. have to have you re-record if you do that. Yeah. But um, that would be so much fun. You, you can either email it to talk to us at so here's my story dot com. Um, you can uh, so, oh, if you're connected with us on Facebook, which if you're not. You should be. Um, you can send it via Facebook Messenger. You can actually even record it right there. Um, yeah, that would be so much fun. And you know what? I we maybe will record another story at some point. Not right now, but at some point to see if we can stump our community. Oh, to put it in the Facebook group. Yep. Just see if they can come up with show a, them how it's done. Give it a whirl there. <laughs> that would be fun. Um, so before we go, I just want to remind everyone we're really excited about growing this community and having more people in the group so we can really, really connect and engage, connect and engage and really start having some meaningful conversations and, and, and sharing on these things. So, um, for this entire month, uh, please do talk about the podcast, show people how to get hooked up to it. Um, if you have any issues getting onto Facebook or whatever, you can even just email us or send us a message in any way that you can to let us know you did any of those things. Um, join the Facebook group. It's so easy to find you just on Facebook. It's um, SHMS podcast community. You can also get there via the, so here's my story, Facebook page. Um, and join in and let us know you didn't. We'll put extra drawings and then somebody will record with us. No affidavit required. <laughs> So that's our story. But the discussion doesn't have to end here. No, it does not. In fact, we don't want it to. No, we don't. <laughs> that is why we actually have our private Facebook group. Which we started to make sure that we could get your comments, your rants, your thoughts. Your stories. Your stories. You can find links to that group as well as show notes and links to subscribe via email and how to find us just about anywhere you can possibly find podcasts at SoHere'sMyStory.com. And you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter 
at SHMS Podcast. And since we know it takes a village. Yes, it does. <laughs> we'd like to thank our village, our super talented, incredibly patient team. And occasionally snarky Ooh, team. Yeah, but in the best of ways. In the best Lovingly of ways. Snarky. Yes. <laughs> Good mockery. So, so a huge shout out to the people who actually help us produce our show. Uh, first, our sound engineer, Tom Hansen. Thanks to Christy Schmier for our brilliant show notes and all the other fantastic writing she does for us. And to Taylor Mathauer for doing just a little bit of everything. Thing. Including wrangling us. Including wrangling us. <laughs> Which is no small feat. No, it's not. This is Jody Hume. And I'm Elliot Wagenheim. And you've been listening to So Here's My Story.